Now let's discuss Israel's war in Gaza. The ICJ or the International Court of Justice has ordered them to immediately halt the Rafah offensive. Israel is unlikely to follow the order because it's not legally binding, but it further chips away at Israel's moral standing or whatever was left of it. The prolonged conflict is hurting not just Israel, but all those who are associated with it, including players in the business world. Companies with links to Israel are facing intense scrutiny, even boycott calls. One of them is BlackRock, an American investment giant and the world's biggest asset manager. As of December last year, BlackRock was managing some $10 trillion in assets. So this company is both rich and powerful. Now they're pursuing a deal in Malaysia. It involves a firm called Malaysia Airport Holdings their heart, or MAHB for short. Now, MAHB is the biggest airport operator in Malaysia. The country has 40 airports. MAHB operates 39 of them, 39 out of 40. It is clearly a major player. And BlackRock is planning to buy this company. The deal is worth $2.6 billion. BlackRock is offering this money as part of a consortium. They want to buy this company, this Malaysian company, and control it. And this should have been a straightforward acquisition. But the deal has run into trouble. BlackRock is facing boycott calls. Malaysia civil society groups have started a protest. 22 of these groups have written to the Malaysian government. They want to block BlackRock from buying the airport company. The reason? BlackRock's links with arms manufacturers, the ones that supply military goods to Israel. BlackRock owns stakes in multiple weapons companies, and one of them is Lockheed Martin. This is the company behind the F-35 fighter jet. Israel's military has these planes in its arsenal. BlackRock is a major investor in Lockheed Martin. In fact, its third biggest investor. It owns about 7% of the shares. Such holdings are now hurting BlackRock in Malaysia. It is being called a genocide enabler for its financing to weapons companies. And this campaign is gaining traction. This month, Kuala Lumpur hosted a defense exhibition. More than 1,300 companies participated from 60 different countries. U.S. weapons makers were also present, including Lockheed Martin. They faced backlash from the locals. Protesters showed up at the venue with banners like these. Murderous arms dealers, damned America, and we will fight. There were some messages for the Malaysian government too. We urge Malaysian government to take a firm and consistent stand. Uh, do not allow uh, this um, um, the arm dealer to be present and promote their warmongering uh, ideology. Accepting sponsorship from Lockheed Martin is despicable. It is blood money. It is profit made from the deaths of thousands, tens of thousands of innocent civilians. Now, the campaign is picking pace. The protesters want to punish not just the weapon suppliers, but their financiers too. They're building pressure on Anwar Ibrahim, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Throughout this week, he's been, throughout this war rather, he's been on the Palestinian side. He's been against Israel. Prime Minister Ibrahim has even tried to project Israel as a colonizer in Gaza. I've said the whole issue is not uh, what happened uh, two weeks ago but it's through what we, what we term as politics of dispossession. I mean, countries cannot continue to colonize another part of the uh, uh, Palestinian uh, lands. Uh, but but uh, what is critical for now is, of course, uh, peace. That's been Ibrahim's position. But when it comes to taking on big business, it appears Prime Minister Ibrahim likes to be careful. His government has been accused of being unresponsive to these concerns. Earlier this month, Ibrahim spoke out about this deal. He did not name BlackRock, but he said a pro-Zionist company, those are the words he used, a pro-Zionist company will not own 25% of MAHB. So will the deal with BlackRock be blocked? The prime minister did not say it in so many words. Perhaps he does not want to push away a major investor like BlackRock. Though sooner or later, he will have to take a clear stand because Malaysia is a Muslim-majority country where anti-Israel sentiment runs deep. And BlackRock is not the first to face this challenge. Many Western companies have been at the receiving end, like McDonald's, one of the world's biggest fast food chains. It has faced boycott calls in Malaysia and Indonesia.
Coffee chain Starbucks has seen a decline in business. Sales have slowed in West Asia. Their stores in the West have also seen protests. Though Starbucks has denied taking sides in the conflict. Others like Coca-Cola, Pepsi and Puma have also faced boycott calls. And this may not end anytime soon because the war shows no sign of ending. There's no way big business can avoid getting caught in the crossfire. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.